here. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. Then we have our Q and A session like we normally do. Then we're going to move into our uh, lesson for today. Dear Father God, Creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made, God. We are glad. We are rejoicing in it, God. We pray that you have your way in this place. And God, you fill this space with your blessed Holy Spirit. That God, you show us what it is that you want from us, what it is that we're required to do, and that God, you give us the strength, the power, the anointing, the grace, the mercy, the skills, the ability, the confidence, the reassurance, reassurance, whatever we need to be able to serve you to our fullest and to our best so that you are glorified, you are honored, you are praised. Father God, thank you for those who are here. Thank you for those who are on their way. Thank you for those who want to be here but could not be here. Thank you for those who are worshiping with us today via Facebook Live, Periscope Live, and eventually on YouTube. And Father God, most importantly, thank you for those that you're sending our way that we don't even know about yet that are going to come and bless us in a mighty, mighty way. Father God, we love you. We thank you. It's in your son's mighty mattress, marvelous, magnificent name we do pray. Amen. 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 Let's, let's open up with our Q&A session. If there's any questions you have from Sunday's sermon or anything you've been reading, discussing, or chewing on, thinking about regarding God that you want to ask, let's jump in. Let's jump into that now. Let's ask those questions so that we can get whatever understanding that God has for us to get. Look like you're thinking about a question, D.J. Jones. Are you not? Oh, good. Oh, you good? Okay. Mm -hmm. let's, a, amen. If we don't have any questions, let's jump right in mm -hmm. to our mm -hmm. lesson today. Mm -hmm. As you know, last week, we actually begun looking at the actual scripture of Genesis. We have been doing an introduction to Genesis, but we're now in the actual scripture of Genesis. So let's, this will be, we're going to break it up in chunks, all right? Uh, and we'll, we'll, let's look at the first five verses of Genesis chapter 1. I have it up here on the board for you. If you have your Bible, you can read along with your Bibles. Mm -hmm. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. It reads, In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw... Uh, Amen. I guess my cooker's not working. Oh, there it is. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Amen. Those are the first uh, five verses. Let's, look, we'll, we'll, let's do a more in-depth look at that. Looking at verses 1, 1 and 2. There are two ways to translate verses 1 and 2, Okay. There is the traditional translation. This is uh, the very conservative, very traditional translation. And this is the translation that we normally find in the King James Version and the Revised Standard Version. Um, it reads like this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, period. Mm -hmm. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. All right? That's the way it has been traditionally translated. Mm -hmm. Scholars have translated this to imply that God's first creative act was to create a formless earth and waters. Okay? That earth was not this beautiful ball that we see it is, or just a formless, ma a formless matter out there, and then there are waters that are covering this formless mass. Okay? Uh, creation, again, creation is understood as bringing or, or making things, making existence, uh, or bringing into all things out of nothing. So what we have in the traditional uh, translation is there was nothing, and then God starts to bring something and everything and anything into existence. That nothing was there, but God is creating everything. All right. Uh, this is the what we call the doctrine of ex nihilo, all right? This whole not something out of nothing, all right? Uh, more recently, a second alternative translation of Genesis 1, and Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2 has arisen. Instead of translating verses 1 and 2 as independent causes, as independent sentences, the second translation translates the second verse of Genesis as a subordinate clause 
whose support, whose sole purpose is to describe the formless earth and waters as a pre-existing material out of which God shaped the world. All right. So the first theory has God creating everything out of nothing, whereas the second theory has God taking a pre-existing formless void. It's something out there. It's water out there. And then from that, ordering existence, creating existence, okay? Uh, and uh, and uh, so, like, for example, last week when we were looking at his sister, uh, Hattie, was like, I have a problem with the way you're doing the same one. I like the original one. Uh, because she had this belief. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can paraphrase it correctly. She had this belief that the first verse said God created heaven and earth. And then the second verse talks about that, 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 it, I need her here to explain how she thought it. But basically, had, she, was, she was flipping the verses. She was like, how could the first verse be God created heaven and earth, then the second verse say it, it was formless void, and out of that he created. It should be the other way around. It should be formless void, then the earth. All right? And I was trying to get her to understand that a way to see that is this second translation. That the this, that this second verse is merely a description or a descriptor of the action God was taking in the first verse. All right? Uh, so, this creates the second uh, translation, would then read like this instead of two sentences, it's one. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while wind from God swept over the face of the waters. When he created, there was this. Nothing. There was a something, this void that God then organizes and 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 gives purpose to. All right. Again, the second tra translation creation is understood as ordering. And here's the reason why I like, and we're going to talk more about this as we move through Genesis chapter one, is that God sees chaos, confusion, and discord. God comes in and with, the, with his holy power speaks order, purpose, and peace into chaos, disorder, and confusion. Then he ends the creation with, let us create man and woman in our, email, in, in our image. Male and female, he created them. In his, in his image, he created man. Which then meant that when he created us in his image, he gave us that same power to speak order, purpose, and peace into di confusion, disorder, and, 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 and chaos. Go ahead, Doc. And that reminds me of what I was studying this morning and some of the things I was teaching last week. First of all, I want to say that uh, I looked at yesterday's boom shot. Uh -huh. And first of all, I saw out there as to how much darkness was around that moon, uh -huh. for one thing. But second of all, I saw uh, it as uh, the moon shot was just stood up. And the Lord brought my mind. One thing those uh, uh, astronauts recognized the fact that uh, when they got to the moon, God was there waiting on them. Amen. See, see, this, this is the whole thing. And not only to the moon, because now they, that's nothing what they did going to the moon right. now for the exploitation. Right. Or they gonna run into Mars, they're gonna run run into it all. But right. everywhere they run into, they'll find God. Amen. It's one thing we gotta keep in mind. Now, what's so important to us about the fact that uh, uh everything will void, uh the fact that we've been taught that some say we don't know exactly when Satan was kicked out of heaven. Right. Right. We don't know for sure. And the thing that is so would be so astonishing to us in this no. First of all, everywhere Satan goes, he creates darkness. Mm -hmm. Everywhere he goes. Mm -hmm. And so by the second token, but we noticed that God didn't speak this, the Spirit did. Mm -hmm. Let's keep that in mind. The Spirit is the creator, not God. Because he said his Spirit spoke these things into existence. But now, and you just hit the nail on the head, this is what I was teaching all this past week. I all him to the root when the Spirit revealed it to me and all. We are co creators ourselves. That's why God made us in his image. Mm -hmm. And we have said it ourselves, why aren't we doing the same thing God is doing? 
And one thing we got, because we are to blame, because we do not study mm -hmm. the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. See, in order to be like him, you got to know him. Mm -hmm. All of us right now, this is one reason why God, God gets his glory mm -hmm. when we in turn do the same thing that Jesus did. And we said to ourselves, no, it's not, it's not possible. Oh, yes, it is. Right. The whole thing is this, but you got to be infused with the word of God. Amen. That's what happened to Jesus. See, Jesus knew his father. He is, now, he made a, a statement for the clarity of sin. He said, for I am the only one who has sought the father. Right. But now, that should be in our day and time. We should be able to see the father right now ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let me say this and then I'll let you continue your teaching. And that's all I've been talking about since I've been here in First Fellowship. First of all, God broke them away from First Baptist because if you really want to know the truth, the elite were attending either First Baptist or First Fellowship. Mm -hmm. But now here's the case. When God give you a mind to sit up there and to be able not only to read, mm -hmm. to understand, and bring forth, put it into action, this is what we call wisdom and knowledge and understanding the combination of all three. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, that's why I keep telling these people, you know, you were blessed. God gave you a mind to earn a PhD. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't do that. And so why, what is it to your advantage? It's to your advantage of what we then You can take the word of God mm -hmm. and dissect it and come up with a full understanding mm -hmm. and you will have the power in your wisdom and your knowledge to do the same thing Jesus did. Amen. See, this is what we got to keep on our mind. It ain't about religion. It ain't about being saved. But it's about the ability to do exactly what Jesus did. That's the only way God will get his glory. God don't get his glory by us coming and attending the church on the bills on Sundays and stuff. Right. Uh -huh. God get his glory by what we did that he told us I have one unbegotten son, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you something God said. He said, before it's over, I'm going to have many sons. Right. And so how do we get there? We get there by one thing. It's sitting down by yourself, studying God's word. Mm -hmm. Being infused. We go back when we talk about the Holy Spirit, how he the one uh, gobble over his water. Well, the Holy Spirit is doing the identical the same thing with us in our lives. I'm clear about that enough. Amen. See, the Holy Spirit is trying to impact us Amen. with the same power that Jesus had. Now, I thought about her this morning, if I can't hear for a minute. And I'm clear about this enough. He thought about that uh -huh. because of the fact that this stuff. And then I let somebody else talk. I was so, uh, I was so thrilled mm -hmm. as to see as to how Dr. Remit that got up and spoke over her brother's the knowledge and everything. Mm -hmm. How the words became easy to do her, they were very fitting. It didn't take her all day long to say something, <laughs> but she went directly to the point. Uh -huh. and, and so here's the thing right here now, because that's one of our problems. When we try to come in here on Sundays to try to obtain our own righteousness, what it does is this though. It slows us down into who becoming who we're really supposed to be. Mm -hmm. See, God, he, when Jesus raised the dead, when Jesus healed the sick, do you know that you had the ability to do the same I mean, the thing he did? He said, greater things than these shall you do. And so, I'm going to let somebody talk. But here's the thing right here now. But first of all, you got to be taught how to learn. Right. And I'll tell you something else. And I will say this in my conclusion. I went to the service and everything uh, back in 1955. My mama couldn't even read her name. Oh, wow. But when I came back home, my mama would read this book. So we have no excuses before a holy God. We have no excuses whatsoever about I would have done this if I had done uh, Jesus told us one thing. You don't need nothing mm -hmm. but me. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. And you're absolutely right. We, Jesus is our all in all, our everything. Um, amen. Um, and I agree. Spending the time studying this because uh, it's necessary. In fact, Sister Hattie asked last week this question. She said, why do we need to study the Old Testament if Jesus came? And I said, what do you mean by that? She said, 
shouldn't we just be studying the New Testament? Because Jesus came. And I said, I told her, I said, no. I said, first of all, when Jesus is teaching, he's making constant references back to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't know the reference, mm -hmm. you don't know, understand, have the full understanding of the teaching. Mm -hmm. Also this, what we see in the Old Testament is almost like a cheat sheet mm -hmm. of what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we, that, I see a lot with organizations, not this church, is that an organization will be in trouble and it will be bereft of leadership. And the organization will pray for leadership. The leadership will come. And then the leadership comes with a, with a vision, with an agenda to move the organization forward. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, because we have become complacent in the interim, mm -hmm. We don't want to move forward. So then we start talking about how good it was before the leader came. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We all have the, ooh, I wish I was back in Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, and, mm -hmm. and again, that's nothing new under the sun. Mm -mm. That's what the Israelites did to Moses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here it is, God, Moses is trying to get the people to Mount Sinai mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then to the promised land mm -hmm. to realize what God had. Mm -hmm. But the whole time, the people were griping. And they're griping mm -hmm. about things that really are inconsequential mm -hmm. at that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so here's the thing. How do we then become people mm -hmm. that trust God by faith and mm -hmm. don't fall in the same, in the same path? Mm -hmm. We pick up the book. I'm using my phone because mm -hmm. I got my Bible on my phone. Mm -hmm. We pick up the book and mm -hmm. read what the people mm -hmm. did before mm -hmm. and how God said that was wrong. Mm -hmm. And then we say, if that's wrong, then let's do the opposite. Amen. If, if griping is wrong, yes. then, then let's do the opposite. Then, then let's start Amen. praising. Yes. If challenging is the wrong thing yes. to do, then let's start supporting and following. Yes. It's it's there. I know they didn't have internet, Facebook, mm -hmm. tablets, mm -hmm. but the human condition has not changed mm -mm. Mm -mm. at all. Mm -mm. It's still the same. It's still the same. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we study this mm -hmm. not to waste our time, mm -mm. but to get a not only an understanding of who God is, mm -hmm. but what God expects from us. Mm -hmm. And Amen. Then, and, like and, 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 and once we get what God expects from us, mm -hmm. then we can serve mm -hmm. how we need to serve. Mm -hmm. All of us have been kids at one point in time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if your mama like my mama, mm -hmm. my mama laid out the rules. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And at the time I was young, I couldn't understand why she was laying out the rules like that and enforcing mm -hmm. them. And once I got older, I heard her talking to somebody, and it made sense. She said, Without giving children rules, mm -hmm. they don't know how to live. And you're they, right. they, they don't know where to, where, whether to go left or to go right. right. They don't That's know right. the rise or the fall. Right. And so what happened, the rules mm -hmm. help kids because mm -hmm. they say, this is as far as you can go. Mm -hmm. Once you get here, you need to pull back. Mm -hmm. And as long as you understood the rules, mm -hmm. life was good for you mm -hmm. because you knew what was not your responsibility? Mm -hmm. You knew what was your responsibility. Mm -hmm. You knew how what you could do. Mm -hmm. You knew what you couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And what happened, you life functioned better. But when you were out there trying to figure it out on your own mm -hmm. and come to find out what you did was opposite what mama wants you to do, mm -hmm. that, that, let me tell you, I joke all the time, I got no behind right now, but my mom and dad done beat it off, off of me. Mm -hmm. Because of times when I would cross that line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And mm -hmm. so that's what studying the Old Testament does. Mm -hmm. It gives us a framework and a reference point mm -hmm. so we know exactly what God's expectation of us mm -hmm. are, what we can expect of Him, mm -hmm. and how we can walk mm -hmm. and be who we need to be, mm -hmm. and then let God be who He needs to be, mm -hmm. and we can function as one people. Go ahead, brother. One thing, two things I hit on, you hit on very briefly with this and all. I saw talking about last week about the fact, have you noticed that you go out there and look at the Atlantic Ocean? And you see that large body of water, mm -hmm. but do you know that ocean has boundaries as how far it goes mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to the shore? Mm -hmm. It'll go a certain place and then it stops mm -hmm. and retreats. That was a book I was studying last week about. You know, the reason why we're not successful in our life, we don't know when to stop. <laughs> see, our whole thing is this now, and the most important thing God is telling us. And it's amazing how I studied all this when you talk about this book. See, God wants us to do one thing. Give back to Jesus. On the road to Damascus and everything, we found out how those two disciples walked upon with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he began to expound upon them from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Didn't it? Because the, everything in the book talk, tells about Jesus. Jesus. Everything does. Mm -hmm. And so by the same time, just stuff, here we are right here now. And I'll say this one more time since it's a little minute here, not to pick her out and choose her. I've told about you ought to be on your knees or all riding in your car. Thanking God 
for the mind he gave you. Amen. Thanking God how he empowered you and others fell along the wayside and all, but yet you must continue to go on Amen. and to see what the end is going to be. Amen. I'm trying to say, and I've been talking about this here since I got the first fellowship now. I am so encouraged to be around such talented people. Amen. Because I do think it's tough. Whether you believe it or not, you had the anointing on you when you were in high school. Or when you were in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Or when you was in uh, in a uh, uh, college. People were banging. We also know something else. And I had to contemplate with the guy about that this morning. Yeah, on the day of Pentecost and all, the Lord poured out the, the Holy Spirit. But catch this. He didn't pour it all out on them twelve. He reserved that Holy Spirit for me and you all. For See, but you don't get this unless you are spiritually filled. Uh, how do you get your spirit to feel? You make it your first preference. First of all, you give your life to God, and then you ask Him Amen. to fill you with His Holy Spirit. Now, ain't no need to ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit if you don't put this book up. Because that's where you get the filling. That's the filling station right here, you know. Amen. So, so let, let's fill you up then. Let's fill you up. Let's fill Go you ahead. up. Okay, let's fill you up. This, again, with the second translation, it's, if it's understood as ordering, that God is ordering mm -hmm. existence, mm -hmm. then this is God imposing a purposeful and intentional design mm -hmm. on formlessness and chaos. Yes. What we're looking at verses one and two, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. where it says in, in the beginning, mm -hmm. or when God began creating, the earth was mm -hmm. formless, was a void. Mm -hmm. In fact, the whole six days of creation, mm -hmm. we see God each day mm -hmm. imposing more purpose, mm -hmm. more design, mm -hmm. more order on creation. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we see, we see Him building in stages. Mm -hmm. But every time he builds, it's almost, remember in, in geometry or, or uh, algebra, you had the chart and as you move, you didn't just move up, you just mm -hmm. move that way, mm -hmm. you moved at an angle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That as you moved, you mm -hmm. kept going up. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening as God is creation. He's just not going here, he's just not going there. Mm -hmm. He's going at an angle and, mm -hmm. he's, and he's, cre he's creating. Mm -hmm. And 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 and, uh, and the, the important of this is, mm -hmm. uh, that since we're made in his image, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have the ability mm -hmm. to also create order. Yes. To create, to actualize purpose. Yes. And to uh, maintain peace. Yes. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Now, 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 hold on a second. Now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> this alternate translation, the second translation. Yes. The, the first one has God created the world, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. The world was vo voidless. Mm -hmm. vo was voidless. Mm -hmm. This second creation says, when God created mm -hmm. the earth, mm -hmm. the earth was voidless. Mm -hmm. All right. This second creation story reflects mm -hmm. the convention, conventional opening mm -hmm. for creative narratives in the Near East. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. We, as Christians mm -hmm. and as the Jews, they did not have a monopoly on this idea of creation. Mm -hmm. Virtually every Near East culture mm -hmm. and their religion mm -hmm. started with the idea that their deity mm -hmm. showed up on the scene from wherever he was, mm -hmm. found either nothing mm -hmm. or voidlessness, mm -hmm. and then began ordering mm -hmm. the cosmos mm -hmm. so that the cosmos looks like it is, right? Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. now, now, our different religions may have different Tenets are different, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but this is almost universal in these stories. In fact, if you go pick up uh, uh, the 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 uh, I forgot what it's called, but it came out of Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. You would think you're reading the uh, Genesis because mm -hmm. they almost read mm -hmm. word for word. Mm -hmm. This is a, a conventional opening that we mm -hmm. see there. Mm -hmm. We also, this second translation also reflects the, reflects the Bible view as creation mm -hmm. as establishment of order and the restraint of chaos, mm -hmm. all right? Let's look at Psalm 104. Mm -hmm. Psalm 104 mm -hmm. is uh, verses 5 through 9. Mm -hmm. The psalmist is mm -hmm. speaking about creation, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, Psalm 104, mm -hmm. verses 5 to 9, mm -hmm. reading from the New Revised Standard says, You set the earth on its foundation mm -hmm. so that it would never be shaken. Amen. You covered it yes. with the deep as a garment. Yes. The water stood above the mountains. Yes. At 
at your rebuke, mm -hmm. they flee. They flee. Hey, at the way. sound of your thunder, yes. they take the flight. Yes. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, mm -hmm. to the place mm -hmm. that you appointed for them. Mm -hmm. You set a boundary. Come on, come on, brother Rose. Mm -hmm. You set a boundary yeah. that they may not pass, yes. so that they may not again cover the earth. Amen. May I say something? Yes, right you may. Let me tell y'all something. You know, we look for that word peace. Please leave him with your understanding. Peace don't mean uh, the absence from Satan. <laughs> Peace means prosperity. Peace means good health. Peace means all of your needs being met by, through Christ uh, and his riches and glory. Mm -hmm. That's what peace is. We get back to another thing you were saying. See, our biggest problem is this now, and all of us are so guilty of this. Uh -huh. God created, now he's there by himself, wasn't he? When he created the world, the earth, and such and such. So, but when man came, he didn't have to do nothing, did he? No, he turned it over to us. He turned everything over to us. That's what he's trying to get back now. But here's the thing right now. Keep this one thing in mind. When you were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Mm -hmm. That means Satan didn't leave not one ounce out of you of his control. We don't even think about this. We think we're free. Uh-uh. You're in bondage to the evil one. You're in Satan is still in control of your life. Unless you come to Jesus. Now here's the thing I was trying to make part I was trying to make. Is that uh, I often talk about uh, money uh, versus speech. Mm -hmm. And we think money is so prevalent because one thing we have uh, money is uh, it himself is just lying around, but it controls the world. Mm -hmm. But the power of your tongue is controlled by the Holy Spirit. That's, I ain't wanting all this now, but don't keep this back. See, your whole thing is to be able to not to work, but to speak it into existence. I saw, uh, very quickly, I saw Rashawn this day of uh, the, uh, your brother-in-law's film. And I told Rashawn, I said, son, didn't I tell you that if I ever find a secret, of not working and making money, I was going to tell you. <laughs> he said, that look at it. I said, son, John, I have arrived to that day. I don't know what the last time I would. But I found out one thing at all. If I will spend that quality time alone with God, mm -hmm. I don't need no job. See, see, what God is trying to get us to do, going right back to what he's talking about in creation. That's why he made everything for Adam and Eve when they came here. Everything they needed was already here. That's where God trying to get us back to you, now. You jumping into chapter two? I'm ready. To, oh, I ain't I, ready to go there yet. I ain't ready I, to go okay, there yet okay. because in chapter two, okay. I, 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 we're going to talk about chapter two. Is how many people go to a job? When you get to the job, there's nothing for you to do but just sit there at the job. <laughs> how many caretakers, gardeners, go to care for a garden that doesn't need caring for? That they didn't have to prune a tree, they didn't have to pull a weed, they didn't have to only fruit. They had the fruit. They had to pull was what they were going to consume, and 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 that. But that speaks to God's desire to really meet every need we have, I mean, so, so that we really don't have a need that we can spend, like you saying, spend the time with Him. But no, we mess it up. But don't worry, you in chapter two, you got to come back <laughs> uh, for chapter two. Uh, Amen. Hey, Verse 2, the earth was formless. Let's look at this for a second. The earth was formless, I was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Now, I know we've been talking about this, and we read this so fast that we're not picking up on some theological concepts when we read it, okay? The first, the earth is described as formless. And now, what I found, I found a picture of the earth. You know, it's all nice and perfectly round and, and whatnot. It's spherical. However, okay, come on, crazy. All right, the Aramaic word that the New Revised Standard Translators has translated formless is tuhu, T U H T O H U W, tuhu. All right. Typically, this word tuhu was used to convey the idea of emptiness, confusion, and unreality. You know how we say that. X, Y, Z is not real or unreal. This is the word you would use. In, in, in fact, when we were young, and you know, as the scripture said, we run young, run around foolish, 
we would be to who? We would be in a state of confusion. Uh, uh, or we, or you saw, it said his soul was empty. His soul was to who? All right. Uh, this same word, this is the same word we're going to observe the authors of the remaining four books of the Pentateuch use when they speak about the wilderness. Mm -hmm. You got to understand the when when we read wilderness, we think desert. We mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. a physical wilderness. Mm -hmm. The authors are talking about an emptiness, mm -hmm. a confusion, a mm -hmm. lack of purpose, a mm -hmm. lack of design mm -hmm. that was in that first generation mm -hmm. of Israelites. Mm -hmm. And so what happened, God, who is who has created order, created purpose, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is not going to let a people mm -hmm. that are empty, mm -hmm. that do not have a, 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 a self a idea of self, mm -hmm. do not have an idea of what their purpose is, mm -hmm. walk into a land that's been created purposefully to achieve purpose. And so, what happens, he uses their complaining and grumbling mm -hmm. as a reason mm -hmm. to keep them into who, mm -hmm. because there already are two. Uh-oh, very quickly. Go ahead, sir. That's go back to this wilderness and everything, exactly what you're saying. Keep my thing in mind. That was much as, just as much as confusion, chilling, and everything else on this earth when Jesus came. Mm -hmm. But he did not come to solve the earth's problem. He came to invite a uh, individual to come and live in him. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole thing's about. That's why if he come back today, oh, we, I'm not gonna get in that. But here's the thing that he know. <laughs> see, see, we are so we are so confused because Satan did that. He taught us rather than teaching us unity. He taught us separation. This year. And see, so by the same tradition, so Jesus saw our our biggest need in life. It wasn't finance, it wasn't education, it wasn't et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but what we needed was a savior. Mm -hmm. Now, he made it so that anybody could be saved. Could be saved. Amen. And so I wanted to take dominate your lesson, but we got to keep this in mind. <laughs> we got to find out, figure out one thing or the first thing, we got two things we got to admit to ourselves. And I, I, I will um, try not to hear it. First of all, we got to admit to ourselves that we are saved. And you can't get uh, revived, or you can't get uh, found by coming here on Sunday morning. I know going nowhere else in there. Uh, the whole thing, this is all. Jesus, the Lord, gave us a Savior. Mm -hmm. After so many years, he's seen that what man needed was a Savior now. Mm -hmm. But yet, Jesus came, and when he came here, he said, Here yeah, I am, y'all. But guess what? How do we find him? Very briefly, the fact is this stuff. We find him by searching the scriptures. Right. Amen. 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 So, let's do this. Again, uh, uh, the idea of whatever is to who is without purpose and function. And to be without purpose and function is to be considered unreal, wasteful, or chaotic. That's where we are now. Amen. Think about this. We were created to accomplish purpose. God repeatedly in the book, whether you're in the Old Testament or New Testament, deems someone sinful, wasteful, and disobedient when that person does not perform the function that God assigns to it. Amen. We, we, we may call that function a commandment. We may call it a calling. Mm -hmm. Whatever we call it, mm -hmm. God has spoken to each of us a purpose. Yes. And when we do not fulfill that purpose, he then says to us, he, he, that's when he calls us evil. Yes. Sinful. Yes. And even wasteful. Yes. It's coming back from this idea here that to be to who, mm -hmm. this Aramaic word, mm -hmm. means that you're without purpose, you're out functioning, you're mm -hmm. without whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, that God has deemed you were supposed to be or you're supposed to have mm -hmm. and because you're not mm -hmm. you are empty mm -hmm. and chaotic mm -hmm. and wasteful now in verse 2 darkness is used as a noun okay the interesting thing name purpose of fame right yeah it, it's it's it's, mm -hmm. it's it's a noun mm -hmm. typically darkness is an adjective mm -hmm. darkness is a state of being yes 
Like we 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 say we 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 say he's living in darkness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, or darkness cover the earth. Mm -hmm. It's a state of being. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do we use it as a person, place, or thing. Mm -hmm. But here mm -hmm. in Genesis, mm -hmm. darkness mm -hmm. becomes a thing. thing. Amen. That yeah. has form. Yes. That has body. Yes. That has that has, has a purpose. Darkness. Yes. All right. The word that the Aramaic word for darkness is chosek. Yes. Chosek, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. C O C H O S E K. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, Chosek, all mm -hmm. right? Um, this word, uh, when it's used, uh, I'm sorry, when darkness is used as an adjective, mm -hmm. we usually describe the level of quality of brightness or the lack thereof of a particular place or object. Mm -hmm. You know, darkness is in the room. That means we haven't cut on the light or it's mm -hmm. not enough mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, but here, darkness is a thing. Mm -hmm. And here, check what it did. It covered, it performed a specific action. Mm -hmm. It covered the, the face of the deep. Yes. There was no place on, on the earth mm -hmm. where you could find light because Amen. darkness Amen. had acted as yes. really a, 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 a case that had encased the world. Mm -hmm. So here's, here's, so I'm, I'm getting to a point here. Mm -hmm. The reason why things were so chaotic and out of order mm -hmm. is because darkness mm -hmm. was therefore acting as a barrier mm -hmm. between God and order happening down here. Mm -hmm. And so what, what we see here with God creating, because we you know he says he creates light. Mm -hmm. That light mm -hmm. scatters the darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that whole idea of light mm -hmm. uh, uh, shattering darkness, scattering darkness mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. is will it's order being purpose, mm -hmm. order being realized, mm -hmm. chaos being killed, mm -hmm. disorder being killed, mm -hmm. order uh, and, and, and peace mm -hmm. and purpose being established. Mm -hmm. The Jews, when they would read this story, mm -hmm. they would understand that at the beginning, mm -hmm. the darkness, mm -hmm. the water, mm -hmm. the formlessness mm -hmm. represented the absence of God mm -hmm. and the presence evil. of evil. Very quickly, one, one comment. Very quickly. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we did the same. Uh, but the whole thing, and, and this is why Jesus did not come to save the whole world. No. He came to save those who individually saw him. And this is why this is so important. But the, same, the thing that well, we don't realize this at all. Actually, we are performing God's purposes without even knowing that we are doing it. See, we, we don't know that we are doing it, and we say, how? Because of one thing. Uh, when you, in turn, you have uh, a conversation with anybody, say it yesterday, but the day you wake up and all, and your whole concept of, of that person, this entitlement and everything, has changed. We are, that's why we shouldn't get so, in, in, I mean, get so caught up in what is now happening. I'm cut this rat show. Okay. He went to law school. And this is why this is a power thing I'm getting ready to say. Now. But could you go back and sit in a law class now and recite everything you learned and everything all and use this to the same level of effectiveness and everything and all? Probably not. No. Because one thing about law practice is uh, law is evolved. Is evolved. Mm -hmm. And old Trump probably don't know what he's doing. But even with his new partner to the Supreme Court and everything. Else. See, old Thomas don't sit up and everything all and, and probably uh, Seventy percent of that what they learn in law school doesn't even apply to our society right. today. It, it changes. It, it changes. Up. And so, by the same time, Bishop, somebody had no sense to put a young man in there who had been recently come out of college, et cetera, et cetera, because the law is never obtained. The law is practice. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, last but not least, this thought on, and I'm gonna say something that shocked me so bad this morning. This is rather than something I'll let y'all go. I was reading papers when I got home for the reading now. Even the laws that condemn a man to death 20 years ago don't even apply to that thing. Right, right. And, and we said, what are you talking about? Very quick. I was on a jury one time. We had a man that was convicted of, of, of a person being murdered. And so we finally convicted him. But here's the thing. And I told him, I said, I want to uh, get his reward to be death, not life in prison. And they didn't bit more know what I called outside the man in the moon. Mm -hmm. I can go back home and read it today. Because the, the law is changing now. A man on death row soon gonna come off of death row. Mm -hmm. But a man that's in prison, life in prison all can't be removed unless they come up with some other way in order to get him out of there. 
But, but I thank God for advance. Now, this is what he wants people like us or people like people that preach fellowship. He wants us to become the light of the world. Now, it looks like he ain't teaching us. It looks like he's not. <laughs> but he's teaching very heavily. He is. Well, he's preparing God. us for a storm that's getting ready to come about. Amen. Amen. We don't even know this brewing. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me do this. Do y'all remember the story where Jesus first gets in the boat with his disciples and they're crossing the water? And he's down below in the bow of the ship in the very back. He's asleep and the water's crashing and he's at peace. One of the reasons why the disciples have such issue there is because a water is considered chaotic. Mm -hmm. It's considered evil. Mm -hmm. It's considered bad. Mm -hmm. The Jews were not swimmers. They were not mm -hmm. Olympians. They, they would not have said, let's go to the beach and get in the water for vacation. They, water was, bodies of water were a necessary evil. Mm -hmm. That was where they got their fish, mm -hmm. where they drew water from mm -hmm. when they needed it. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, they stayed off of it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why they stayed off of mm -hmm. this two, These two words right here, the deep. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Please understand what that means. That is a, this gigantic body of water mm -hmm. that existed. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in Jewish theology, there was no end to it. Mm -hmm. It just went on and on and mm -hmm. on and mm -hmm. on and on. Mm -hmm. You, If you were in it, you would never have found solid ground mm -hmm. to, to come mm -hmm. rest on. Mm -hmm. And it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. it, and, and the Jews understood that water had the ability to drown you, mm -hmm. to suffocate you. Mm -hmm. They, they also had to, uh, they also understood from watching uh, the the, uh, the weather mm -hmm. that certain storms mm -hmm. could devastate and destroy things. Mm -hmm. They understood with flooding mm -hmm. that flooding could destroy things. Mm -hmm. So they had a very negative outlook on water. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. it's reflected in their creation mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. the word. Uh, the Aramaic word they use for the deep is tehom, mm -hmm. or it's spelled T T H H O M. Mm -hmm. It's pronounced tehom. Mm -hmm. All right. That this is this great big subterranean reservoir of water mm -hmm. that we observe explode mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the earth mm -hmm. when God does a great flood. Mm -hmm. If you read in Genesis mm -hmm. six and seven, it says mm -hmm. God allowed it to rain, and then mm -hmm. the waters from the earth mm -hmm. came forth. Mm -hmm. It's the same word mm -hmm. that you. It's this. There's this idea, there's this reservoir. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've ever seen a, a, a reservoir. Mm -hmm. They are huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they are expensive. And this idea that there is this a reservoir mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that of water. Mm -hmm. And that here's the thing. The Jews still believe it still exists. Mm -hmm. They still believe it exists. Mm -hmm. And at God's command, mm -hmm. should he command, mm -hmm. it will... Release again. Mm -hmm. Is 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 floodgates will release again mm -hmm. and and release water up mm -hmm. up into mm -hmm. the up to the world. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. In no, in, in fact, Genesis chapter seven verse eleven. Let me read it to you. Right mm -hmm. right? Uh, what? Come on, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. It's coming. In the six hundred year of Noah's life, in yes. the second month, on the seventeenth mm -hmm. day of the month, mm -hmm. on that day, all the fountains of the great deep mm -hmm. burst forth, mm -hmm. and the windows of heaven were open. Mm -hmm. That's to home. Mm -hmm. The word there is to home. Mm -hmm. All right, that idea, of this reservoir, mm -hmm. using this literary device, where corruption and rust mm -hmm. forth or out of a great body of water, mm -hmm. is a very com another very common feature of ancient mm -hmm. Near East creation stories. Mm -hmm. It is not unique to us. Mm -hmm. It's a very common feature mm -hmm. because again, water is chaotic. Mm -hmm. Land is is ordered. Mm -hmm. It's it's not chaotic. Mm -hmm. uh, the all again, the Old Testament is the only literary word that uses this. Mm -hmm. uh, virtually all Near East people's mm -hmm. religions use this idea. Mm -hmm. Verse two speaks about a wind from mm -hmm. God that's sweeping over the face of the water. Mm -hmm. the, the old like King James version. King mm -hmm. James first mm -hmm. says the Spirit of God. Yeah, it moved. It moved upon the water. Upon the water. Yes. Uh, with with uh, uh, the it, the Aramaic word is ruha. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure I got it. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, ruha is mm -hmm. ruha. Okay. Um, uh, I'll leave it right there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, in New Testament, we call it the pneuma. Mm -hmm. When the when when the Old Testament was translated into Greek, mm -hmm. they, they the word for they translated ruma to pneuma, mm -hmm. which is breath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That, that and we, we're going to see that in 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 the second chapter that God breathed. 
Numa, a yes. brief Ruha, yes. into uh, Adam, yes. into, into Adam, uh, uh, Adam. Mm -hmm. This again, this is not. You shouldn't see this as a meteorological occurrence. This mm -hmm. is not a tornado mm -mm. or a hurricane. Mm -mm. This is. You should see this as the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and it's there, it's hovering, mm -hmm. which meant mm -hmm. that uh, 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 which which meant that the God's spirit mm -hmm. was waiting to actualize purpose. Before you know, let me let me let me chew on that Ooh, for a little bit. Before you, before you, a... wait, wait. It's hovering. Mm -hmm. All right, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the, the 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 Numa, mm -hmm. the, the the Numa Agios, mm -hmm. uh, the Ruha mm -hmm. is. Hovering mm -hmm. over the water, mm -hmm. waiting for the command mm -hmm. to now make water obey God. Amen. So what? what so let me put Amen. that in. A, let me put that in a, pre, in, in mm -hmm. a place Back where we can where mm -hmm. we can use that today. Mm -hmm. Many times we think we need to call on God mm -hmm. to come into our situation. Mm -hmm. The truth is. God is in our situation you don't because His Holy Spirit yes. is hovering yes. over the chaotic things in our lives. Yes. What He, what the Holy Spirit is waiting for is for us to acknowledge God so that God can say, "Do it." Oh, right. fix it. Go ahead, Doc. I taught this this morning about we need to stop praying to God. Now, don't get excited, Mr. Sister. Though. Because of the fact that this does. See, most of our prayers are sisters are trying to tell God what to, do, what to do. Right. But everything that needs to be done in your life, God has already done it. What you need to do is this now. Search this to find out what He has done for you. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is going to lead it to you individually. You know. But so our prayer time now <coughs> is completing to thanking and receiving. Amen. One very quick I'll say this one thing about your water. You know, I've seen the, the pictures of the water in the house. And everybody thinks the rain came out. Uh, it shot out from the ground mm -hmm. in enormous force. And this is why I was able to cover the whole earth there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It shot and laughed at least. I saw a Russian one time, near Tommy Boom. That's the way they're going to shoot their missiles off and come up out of the ground like this and all. And one thing you made a formula over just now, I watched it yesterday. Uh, how did that ship know which way to go when it was on its way to oil? It, it, it could have gone and ratted it straight across this right, way, right, this right. way, or gone down. But it had a mission that was designed right. by the engineers to go straight, straight ahead. Yeah, right. It was programmed. It was Program. pro it was programmed to do that. And let me say this, I don't want anyone to be confused. But Brother Rose is saying about prayer, he's saying what we basically talked about when we had prayer, that too many times when we pray, we don't come to God seeking a conversation. We don't come to God seeking revelation of what he wants from us. We come to God with an agenda saying, God, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, and I wanted it last week, all right? Instead of coming to God in that time, remember we said prayers, two-way open communication with God. Yes. Coming and making ourselves available to hear from God. Yes. God already knows what we need. Yes. He, it, it, Jesus said, God knows what you have need of before you even know you have need of. <laughs> so, and, and Jesus even teaches this. He says, so therefore, your job is not necessary to come to God to tell him what you have need of. He's already got that. Your job is to come receive the instruction, the direction, and the encouragement to serve him. All right? So, um, uh, again, Ruha, Numa, translate wind, but also to translate breath and spirit as an animator of the inanimated objects and things, okay? Um, the King James Version and the Revised Standard Version translate, translate Ruha as spirit of God. Mm -hmm. uh, the, problem, um, uh, uh, the problem with interpreting Ruha as spirit of God is that such interpretation is really based on a much later Greek interpretation of Ruha. That's Numa, all right? We just talked about that. That the 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 uh, Jews would have understand this when the, it, as God's present. Mm -hmm. To to specifically identify it as the Holy Spirit yes. is a Greek New Testament yes. uh, 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 theology point, all right? Just want to make it or make you aware of that mm -hmm. so that way mm -hmm. you, you, when you're talking 
Because guess what? You're going to talk with other Christians who have studied this. Mm -hmm. You're going to talk with Jews who have been studying this mm -hmm. since they were children. You're going to talk with Muslims who mm have -hmm. been studying mm -hmm. this. If, and everyone else is going to know this. Mm -hmm. And I need you to know it so that when you're talking, you don't look like the one. In fact, you don't look like President Trump at the United States Nation when he's talking and everyone's laughing at him. Because he don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, but now what we need to remember is at this point, event at this moment when the wind of God, the spirit of God is moving, there's no such thing as air. Air does not exist. Mm -hmm. There's only formless mm -hmm. earth and water. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. Um, uh, amen. Mm -hmm. um, so let me go to this. All right, the, a wind from God sweeping over the face of the mm -hmm. waters. Mm -hmm. um, uh oh. Uh oh. I, I, what happened? Uh oh. I'm at the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll take a quick. Oh, amen. Here, let me switch over to my, uh -huh. my phone because I I don't have I didn't do it on this computer. Dean don't do it. Dean don't. That's okay. Um, I have another PowerPoint presentation. It's just not here right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we have uh, um, Amen. Um, so it's hard. The, the next set of verses begin with verse 3. It's God said, let there be light, mm -hmm. and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day mm -hmm. and the darkness night. Mm -hmm. This idea of illumination, that mm -hmm. God is the source of illumination. Mm -hmm. um, in my notes I have for you, the presentation I have for you, the word illuminate is really a double entendre. Yes. Because it means light. light. Mm -hmm. It also means to make aware, mm -hmm. expand horizon, broaden mm -hmm. horizon, mm -hmm. give understanding. Mm -hmm. The Jews, when they are reading this, mm -hmm. When God said, let there be light, and there was light, he saw the light, and, the, and then he saw that the light was good. Mm -hmm. They are seeing that not only as a physical thing, mm -hmm. but a spiritual awakening. Yes. Which, awakening. All right? And even though man is not created, plants are not created, mm -hmm. animals are not created, mm -hmm. that God authored a spiritual awakening mm -hmm. before he created anything or anyone. Mm -hmm. Which means that um, uh, when we come into being, we don't come into being in a void or absence of God's awareness, God's purpose, mm -hmm. God's existence, mm -hmm. God's uh, 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 will. We, we come into existence in that, amen. we come into existence in that, that perspective. Here's also another thing. Notice what God does. Mm -hmm. God puts a time limit on darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness used to run rapid, rapid. Mm -hmm. okay, Un unchecked. Mm -hmm. Now darkness is re is re is restricted to the night. That's right. All That's right? all. It, it's it's to the night. <laughs> yeah. This is important <laughs> yeah. because mm -hmm. this is going to become a theme that we're going to see repeatedly throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. That evil happens. Do not fret. Do not give up. Mm -hmm. Evil is on a time limit. Temporary. Yeah, it's temporary. Now, we may not know how long that time limit is. That's right. But the, con the consolation that we take away, mm -hmm. sin, evil, wrongdoing, mm -hmm. is, on a, is on borrowed time. Amen. And that at some point, <coughs> the darkness will disappear. will disappear. And the light will appear. This is why Jesus says, I am the light. Mm -hmm. You, you get it? He's uh, when, when, uh, yeah. When he's saying that, uh -huh. he's saying, "I am that point uh -huh. where evil has 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 lost. I am that point where evil no longer exists. I am that point where evil no longer wins." Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead. And this is what I was I was thinking. Don't dare to open your Bible, Lord, until basically you have turned to Psalm 119, chapter 18, verse. Lord, open up my eyes that I might see. In your word. Mm -hmm. Unstop my ears, O oh God, that I might hear your voice. Mm -hmm. This is the good thing for all you teachers that just had nothing on. Amen. Is that you ask God to do one thing. Speak through me through the Holy Spirit, Lord, 
but also open up the ears of my hearers Amen. that they might hear your voice. Amen. We're talking about uh, the limitations of sin. One thing we keep in mind, one thing, and this is what we, the God is trying to get us to do uh, quickly is the fact that matters is. Everything that we have observed, seen, touched, feel with our five sisters and everything else, are temporary. Mm -hmm. Everything. But that which is eternal is not seen as yet. Mm -hmm. We look at it, students at MIT, I watched this same on TV about it, about it. No, short time, it's period of they what they're doing now. They're trying to get foolish people to come into their university and just say what's on their mind. Duke's doing the same thing. All these highly recognized schools, because they have gone to the limit of what the senses can observe, speak, hear, sound, 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 And so now they want to find out who can say something, because that's always my prayer to God. Lord, allow me to walk in infinity with you. And the Lord referred, pulled it back to me and said one thing, you know. It, to walk in infinity with me, it takes nothing but faith. Amen. 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 So, um, you're right. It takes absolute faith. In fact, the word says, without faith, you cannot please man or God. Uh, uh, amen. So, uh, this idea, in fact, this is the scripture where the psalm says, weeping may endure for a night, yes. but joy comes in the morning. Yes. They're, they're still playing on this. Yes. You know, uh, 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 they, they, they're playing on this whole idea that there is a time limit mm -hmm. uh, uh, as far as how long evil, disorder, chaos can reign. Yes. And that eventually uh, 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 light has to be there. Now this is something I want us to notice. In verse 5, mm -hmm. since, since it's back here, praise God for being here. Right <laughs> Amen. God, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want us to read something. Mm -hmm. In verse 5, mm -hmm. uh, he named, now look at this. He gives a light, then he names the light. Yes. Uh, okay. The main or maintain? He, no, no, he names it. Mm -hmm. He names the light, he mm -hmm. names the darkness. Mm -hmm. There's this idea in politics and philosophy. Mm -hmm. That he or she that can name something, someone, someplace has control over it. And that's true. All right? If I can determine what your name is, mm -hmm. then I have control over you. We saw that in the in, in the in Alex Haley's autobiography, mm -hmm. whether you read the book or saw the movie, mm -hmm. where Punta Kente and the master are going back and forth where the master is trying to rename him mm -hmm. Toby. Mm -hmm. And and Kuta Kente is saying, no, my name is Kent, Kuta Kente. Mm -hmm. what, what is going on here, the master is trying to strip away from his Kuta power. Kente his yeah. identity. His yeah. identity was his source of power. Yes. So, here, here God is exercising the power of naming yes. to, to, one, empower the day, mm -hmm. but then to limit the night. Yes. All right? Now, here's another thing I want you to notice. Mm -hmm. The day for Jews begins in the evening mm -hmm. and ends in the, in, in, ends in the, it, it ends in the, uh, at night and ends in the day. Yes. If you look at a Jewish calendar, we're in like 6,000 something. Mm -hmm. And this day, Wednesday, didn't actually, doesn't actually start until sundown today. That's right. Mm -hmm. but that's what it does. And it because in fact, if I know how Mark's gospel says, mm -hmm. but if we take Matthew's gospel mm -hmm. at face value, mm -hmm. Matthew is saying that Jesus was crucified at a different time than what we understand. Too. Because Matthew indicates that uh Jesus was arrested in the evening. That would have mm -hmm. been the, the, the start. So let's assume six, six o'clock mm -hmm. is the start. Mm -hmm. By the ninth hour, that would have been three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. When he's hung, it's mm -hmm. been three o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. All right. He then hang. Then he then hangs for another six hours. Mm -hmm. All right, because that would now have been the afternoon. It would have been nine o'clock in the morning for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we get the darkness. Mm -hmm. We get the darkness returning. Mm -hmm. This thing mm -hmm. returns. Mm -hmm. This emptiness, this unreality, this mm -hmm. this to who returns mm -hmm. because the light mm -hmm. looks like it's been extinguished. Mm -hmm. The light looks like it's been killed. Mm -hmm. All right. But I say that to you because when we read things, mm -hmm. we typically read it in the Western civilization context. We yes. assume and say the first thing in the morning, oh that's seven, eight o'clock in the morning when someone rises. That's no, it's that's evening. That's right. 
is at night. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when we read that, mm -hmm. now that takes on a different, mm -hmm. a different context. Mm -hmm. Because if it, it like for example, one of the times Jesus casts casts out demons, mm -hmm. it's early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, we think it's nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's at night. Mm -hmm. The context has now changed. Mm -hmm. The demon is 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 attacking the, the, the person at mm -hmm. night at a time of darkness mm -hmm. where they will be more susceptible spiritually yeah. to being attacked. Yeah. The demon doesn't attack in the light, he attacks in the darkness. Yes. We have to now see it in that context. Mm -hmm. and, and again, that may not be that may not ring a bell for many people, mm -hmm. but if you go back and reread some of these stories mm -hmm. throughout the Bible mm -hmm. and, and understand how the Jews saw it, mm -hmm. not how we, the church, sees it today, mm -hmm. then we will realize mm -hmm. that the authors are using the environment, mm -hmm. using the time, mm -hmm. using the day mm -hmm. as literal, literal symbolisms. Mm -hmm to reinforce mm -hmm. just how dire the situations were mm -hmm. when Jesus came when Jesus came or God intervened. But go um, ahead, love. Go ahead. Um Pastel, mm -hmm. the timing issue would um, not necessarily be different. It's just where people were in the world at that, at time. that particular time. Because right, right? morning um, is at a different time depending on where you are mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Where the sun comes up mm -hmm. and where it goes down. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because it's morning here, mm -hmm. it's, it's afternoon, evening it's, somewhere it's else. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. night somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It right. just depends on where you are in the right. world. But, but, but here's the thing. Notice, notice what our Jewish neighbors, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where they are, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The Sabbath starts. I understand. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I oh, understand. Okay, I got, you, I got you. I'm just, oh, okay, just making an observation I got you. I got you. I that, that wherever you are in the world kind of yeah, depends yeah, yeah, on yeah, what yeah, you yes, call that, that, that's, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Because right now it's afternoon in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you noticed, like, when we watch our evening news, mm -hmm. it, you, if you pay attention to the time up in that left hand corner, mm -hmm. it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we have a member mm -hmm. who serves in armed for forces and she comes whenever she's home. Mm -hmm. Do you know uh, to watch the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. they have to get up at maybe three o'clock in the morning while they're That's over there to watch that it? That time of day, yes. to, to, in fact one one there was one day she sent me a message. I didn't even know she was up. Mm -hmm. She said she couldn't sleep mm -hmm. and she got up and she watched us on inspirational Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, again it was seven o'clock for us. Mm -hmm. She had been on an all night tour. Mm -hmm. And she was on her off hours. And so she got up. It was like 3 o'clock for them mm -hmm. to watch it when she was like, I really need to be asleep. But I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you're absolutely right. Uh, 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 Very quickly, Mr. Teacher. Yes. Yeah, 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 go ahead. One thing. The main thing I've been saying is one thing. If you start off your day, I get to you to get up and I say, the Spirit of the Lord is in this house. Mm -hmm. I ain't playing when I say mm -hmm. that. Because Satan's spirit can't stay there unless mm -hmm. I declare Who's the control? Absolutely. I'm so serious about this time. Power of life and death is in the tongue. And another thing is this, though. And if you, this is why God don't want us to, we've been uh, taught to provide for ourselves. And that's why it really doesn't satisfy. Because we cannot provide for ourselves because we don't really know what we need. But one thing we can always be assured of this, though. God never leaves us or deserves us. Right. That don't go going back to when you're talking about your football game and the times on it got them on your dip. Because one thing, if you recognize the fact that the presence of God is with you, Amen. You I don't care what you're going through with. You're good. You're good. And so that's just what the Lord wants. That's why God don't want us out here preparing for ourselves monetarily or uh, investments or, or sometimes our houses, our homes. Uh uh, God don't want because basically if you really want to know the truth, all that's temporary. It's gonna pass away. Amen. Amen. And, and, and let me let me say this because I I'm looking at our time. I want to be faithful. Mm -hmm. I know this is off by a few minutes, and then my watch is slow by a few minutes. So somewhere between my watch and that clock is right 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 right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. One thing I want us to notice is that God only worked up to a certain point that first day, and then called it a day. Yes, he quit. You know what the problem is with many of us? Mm -hmm. We're so desperate for God yeah. that we want God to move in one minute. That's right. One day, one instant. That's right. 
We want, if, if God's going to rebuild us, we want the rebuilding to happen in one second. That's right. In one, in one, in one second. That's right. In fact, I tease my brother all the time, because you know what my brother, he's, he wants to be married. He's looking for a wife. Mm -hmm. And you know what my brother expects women to do mm -hmm. when he shows up? Mm -hmm. He expects them to say, oh my God, Terrence. There's the Lord. You're so wonderful. <laughs> Marry me right this instant. And I had to tell him, I said, Terry, no woman that you want is going to ask you that at the very, she wants to get to know you and get to see what you're about and you see what she's about. She doesn't want in the moment for you, but he thinks that they, he thinks that that's how simple it should be. And we cannot get my brother to understand to save his life that no woman is going to meet him in the first five minutes and say, you know what? You're my husband. Let's go get married. <laughs> and so I, and I, I laugh and I tease him, but that's how Christians are. We're the same identical way. And, 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 and I prayer immediately. I know. And, and if I got, I have a friend from University of Art, Minister Arthur Wilson. Mm -hmm. He teaches a financial uh, recovery class. Uh -huh. And the first thing he teaches, he starts every class with this. He said, you didn't get into debt overnight. And you ain't going to get out. You ain't going to get out of it. <laughs> he said, it took you time to get it. It, it took you years and years of, diso of financial disobedience to get in it. It's going to take you about as much time of financial obedience to get out of it. And he's saying that to temper expectations. Because a lot of folks come in thinking he's got some secret knowledge uh -huh. that he's going to give them uh -huh. that tomorrow they're going to be out of debt. It doesn't happen like that. And same, same thing here. God, I think God has set this thing up so that we can see God is accomplishing purpose, but he's accomplishing purpose when a set period of time. And, one, and, yeah, and once he accomplished this particular piece of purpose, he chills. So what says, it says, it says to us here, especially here as a church, we are going to do things. We are going to accomplish things. But if we don't get it done by the end of the week, don't be upset. Because it's going to take some time. First of all, God's got to go through and reshape, remold. He's got to give forms to some vo voidlessness. And we all got some void, void, voids that we need to have form. But then he's got to do some other things. And we're going to look at that in each of the days. Amen. I want to be respectful of our time. Let's do this. Are there any prayer requests or prayers that we want to uh, lift up, persons we want to lift up? Uh, I'll share with you one of my classmates from Hampton. Uh, he had uh, uh, taken on his niece and nephews because his brother was unable to be the father figure he needed to be. This morning we were informed that his brother was rushed to the hospital. We don't know why he was rushed to the hospital, but my classmate Antoine is is really upset right now. Uh, and with that kind of upset, you can kind of start guesstimating what, what, it, what is going on. Uh, and, and so, um, Friends, we've all gotten together. We're all asking people to pray uh, because I, he's he's so upset right now. He, he's not even talking to, to people uh, about that. Um, and so we want to be in prayer for his brother Emery. His, his brother's name is Emery. That whatever is going on, uh, that God would make Emery his next miracle uh, that he does. Uh, so uh, please put, pray for Emery uh, uh, as you're praying. We, uh, um, I didn't get no response for my birthday because I wasn't here. <laughs> and people didn't know when it, when it occurred. But anyway, I'm going 82 years old. Amen. Amen. But here's the fact that this is the most precious thing a person could ever uh, uh, obtain. And it's not a righteous life. But it is patience. If you learn to allow patience to have its way in your life, mm -hmm. everything you need to come to you. And I didn't mean part of it. Everything. <coughs> and the words that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on eagles, wings like eagles. And they shall uh, run with horses and not get tired. Amen. That's that's the word. Amen. Uh, any, if there are none, then here, let's do this. Let's go ahead and close out with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for the dialogue, the discussion, the interaction. We thank you, God for how, God, you move in our midst. And, God, we pray that this time, God, you've been able to plant some seeds and that, God, for the seeds you've already planted, that you've been able to give some growth. And, God, for the growth that you've already uh, ordained, that, God, you've enabled us to start bearing the first signs of fruit 
upon which, God, you can harvest. Father God, we pray that as we leave here, we leave this place, we never leave your presence. Father God, we pray for Brother Emery and Brother Antoine and their family right now, God. We pray, God, for everyone that's sick and shut in, everyone that is dealing with a storm or a predicament or tribulation, everyone that's standing in the need for your, uh, your manifest love, grace, and mercy, God. God, we pray that you protect us and keep us so we return here again on Sunday to worship you in spirit and in truth. And sing your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name we do pray. Amen. 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 Turn off.